So now we've uh, finished the line boring with the line boring jig and we've removed everything, cleaned up the block a bit and we're going to get ready to do the final fitting of the crankshaft. That process will use time saver mainly which is a powder that when mixed with oil becomes a gritty sandpaper type, type um, product that will help remove the excess babbit that still remains. When we get done we'll be able to torque the caps and still be able to turn the crankshaft by hand. So let's get started. Okay, I'm going to set the crank back in there again. So the crank fit in there pretty good. I'm going to start with the third main. Here are the shims. We want to have the bolts in as we set this down. Again, we've marked our cap. The notch that I made means the cap goes back on facing the camshaft. So we're going to have to remove our, our cap as a little oversized on the thrust surfaces. So we're going to have to uh, trim that off with our three-edged, three-sided knife here. So we can see that the babbit where the crank has uh, made some grooving. So we're going to take a little bit off at a time. The object is going to be to get this cap to fit down on there and still be able to turn it a little. It's hitting on both sides. The main object is to hold this crank in place with these thrust surfaces. Otherwise the crankshaft and the Model T can move back and forth. And that, cause, that after a while is what will cause a lot of the mags to work uh, to not work properly. So as long as we're rebuilding this we want to hold this crank from moving forward and backwards. So we can see that uh, this is where the crankshaft thrust surface is cutting into the babbit. So we have to keep on removing that till we can get this to slide down in there. Right there it dropped on. Sometimes the third main is affected by the curvature at the end of the main and um, we may need to use a product called bluing to find out where that's rubbing the most. I've been um, using a little something called Persian blue and it is a it is brushed on and what it does is it allows you to see where um, you're rubbing because this cap doesn't want to go down all the way <clears throat> and that means that the crank is like I said before leaning up this way a little bit now I've done it a couple times and uh, <clears throat> right here is my main issue is on this end I have to carve out um, this because once it hits this uh, edge on the outside of the cap it uh, it won't go any farther but uh, since I've done it two or three times I can start to see that it is starting to rub the crankshaft here a little bit in here and so forth now I'm going to take the crankshaft out And by looking at, I'm not really getting much contact in here yet. A little, you can't see it, but a little bit up over in here. But I can see that I'm still rubbing 
along this edge right here. So I'm going to take my little knife and wherever it came off, I'm going to take a little bit more away so that we can get better contact on this surface down here. Looks like we're rubbing right here as well. On the cap, again I'm just going to carve a little bit out. There's another little spot up here. So there, I'm going to clean this up a little bit, put it back together. I'm going to work this cap down a little bit, uh, get this third main a little bit more correct before I start using the time saver because the time saver will ne will never take away as much as needed to especially on this edge right here and right here and in here the time saver will not uh, work sufficiently enough to to remove enough material so so we're gonna mix up some time saver now this is it, it's kind of a powder. And this is a just a container that I used up and I use it to mix it in. So I'll take a little couple of scoops here. And we squirt a little oil in there very low oil. So I'll mix this up and it turns into kind of a paste. One issue with time saver is when you get everything all done you really need to clean your block up to make sure you get all the residue of time saver out of the block before you assemble the engine. So there. Now we've mixed a little bit. We have a brush here that we'll apply it with. The shaft is touching down at the bottom and it will and it is rubbing the cap as well. So um, we'll put a little bit of uh, time saver. Put the crank back in. So I'm going to tighten the bolts up and uh, we'll work it in. This is a device I made out of an old crank and a, a clutch pulley. Kind of helped me turn it at particularly early on like this. We'll just take it kind of easy and turn it a little bit. I'm not going to hurt anything. I don't know if you can hear that, but it is kind of like a sanding sound. We're much closer than we were when we started. <clears throat> this is where you want to wear gloves, because if you hit that cast, pretty hard on the skin. Partly what we're doing here too is the thrust surfaces are getting ground a little bit too and as it gets down farther there it's going to cause a little resistance. So at this point I'm going to take it out again, clean it up and see what I have. Okay now I've cleaned it up. And I don't know how well this will show on the video, 
but we are hitting a surface this grayer area is uh, all the way across the bearing I'll try to move over to the center bearing and that has pretty good coverage on it too um, we're touching all parts of the bearing we didn't put hardly any pressure on this when we were working on the third let me go to the third main so when we started the bat the uh, time saver didn't even hit any surface and now we can see it's it's hitting all along in here it's hitting them so it's hitting it from the front to the back um, on this side it's it's really grinding here so it's it's not down as far as we want it but it, it the it's it's in a position where the crankshaft is sitting relatively straight and and it's not tilted up anymore it's just a matter of working it several times to uh, get the surfaces all fit to the crank so I will put it back together put some more time saver on it put it back together and uh, turn it some more um, put a little bit of uh, time saver Put the crank back in. Put our third main on. Okay, now that um, we're finished using the time saver, possibly everything checks out. We're going to check the uh, space between the crankshaft and the bearing, and that's a, a product that comes in uh, this uh, packaging, and it's basically a very small, thin tube of plastic. So that's plastic gauge, it's it's hair thin. And we put a strip of it down in the block, and then we'll put a strip up by the caps. And then basically it's a matter of uh, torquing the bolts down and taking it off. There's no turning involved or of the crank or anything. So now we place the crankshaft in. So there I'm setting a strip. Comes in different sizes. Uh, this one measures from uh, one thousandths to three thousandths. They have it fourth, but in our case, since we're looking for one to one and a half thousandths clearance, we use the green plastic gauge. So there's a close up of it um, on the third main. So now I put the cap on and again we're not going to turn the crank, we're just going to torque the bolts down. Once we torque the bolts down, that will squeeze the plastic gauge out and the thickness that it ends up will determine how much space is down there in there 
All right, now it's a matter of uh, just taking them off and measuring measuring that distance on the caps and on the block. All right, I don't know if you can see it there. We'll get a close-up of that. Here's a close-up of the third main, and we a little over one thousandths, but it's almost two thousandths on this one. So this is the center, and this distance, here's the two thousandths, it's wider than that, it's about one and a half thousandths, and it's pretty even all the way across, in other words it's not like two thousandths here and three thousandths over here or anything, it's, it's pretty, pretty equidistance. This is the front main. Um, I'm going to analyze it a little bit more. Let's take a look at it on the crank. This is the engine book put out by the Model T Ford Club of America and it's a comprehensive guide to restoring a Model T engine and in here there's a section that shows the specifications for the uh, Model T engine. And we'll take a look at that next and it'll tell us what we should be looking for. Now here we're listing the center main. It should be between five, uh, um, a half a thousand to one thousand. That's ideal. Um, the crankshaft itself is between one thousandths and two thousandths. And that's what we were shooting for. That would be ideal. Our center main is definitely closer to one thousandth than it is to one and a half thousandths, and the other two are between one and two thousandths. Serviceable is two thousandths and three thousandths, respectively. Serviceable in this book is defined means that the part which will operate with this clearance with a possibility of a slight noise. If you get down to if you get as big as four thousand to five thousand, this book says to repair it. So, based on the fact that we could still torque it a little bit more, I didn't fully fully torque it. I think we are closer to ideal than we are to serviceable. So at this point, we're going to drill the oil holes, and uh, first of all, I'm going to drill a pilot hole and find out where it is right there turn it around it's right about there since drill to start with This is always the hardest part for me to do to drill into this nice newly fitted babbit. Get a little bigger. So we're going to cut a hole in all three of the, the mains and then I'm going to take a Dremel tool and make a groove in here that will allow the oil to seep in and go to the width of the main. So now we have the holes all drilled and we're going to put a groove in with this Dremel tool. I wish I had, a, I'm always looking for a better way to do this but this is the best I got right now.
So then I turn the block around and I'm going to cut it again from this side. The ones from the factory, they just cut them right down to the block, pretty much. So by the time I get to the hole, I'm getting pretty close to the block. So there, now I'll do that to the other two and um, the center and the front. And then we'll be ready to clean the block. Okay, so all the uh, cotter keys are in, the bolts are tightened down, and we got to make sure that we can still move it by hand. We can't, it's stiff. So from here on we build the rest of the engine, we just put it together, but the crankshaft has been fitted. Okay, now I put the camshaft in and the, the big timing gear is timed in there. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit and you'll see where we've got an issue. Actually it's lining up just like we had hoped, but there is some lash. Here I'll show you. And that's because the big timing gear is wore out. We're gonna, we've ordered a new one. We'll take this back out. We'll put a new one. This is a new gear right here, the small timing gear. We need a new large timing gear, and then that will fit in there without that lash, and that'll come out just exactly like we had hoped it will would. Okay, now we've uh, installed the new large timing gear. Uh, this is a fiber one, kind of a high-tech plastic that, as you can see, we matched our red dot up with our marking on the small timing gear. And there is absolutely no lash with the two new gears. And as you can see, we are fitting, we are not too tight in the gears, we're just where we want to be. And remember from the beginning, that's what it was all about, using our jig and our false cam to set this distance between the center of this crankshaft and the center of the camshaft. And if we got that right, our gears would line up like they did right here. So now we can go on and set our valve timing and complete the rest of the building of the engine.